Hey there, crypto family. Welcome back to another video where I'm reading that daily crypto news. Today's article comes from Decrypt, and it's how to calculate cost basis for crypto taxes. Uh, before you submit your taxes this year, make sure you calculate your crypto cost basis. And it is tax deadline. And <laughs> if you're like me, you did it last minute. And actually, this phrase, uh, your cost, your what is it? Calculate your crypto cost basis popped up quite a bit of times when I was uploading all my information. So I'm sure a lot of you are confused and want a little better explanation. So here is from the author who wrote this. Mackenzie Patel is a CPA specializing in crypto tax and accounting. She's a senior revenue accountant for Figment. And any views expressed here are her own and don't necessarily represent those of Decrypt. There we go. And again, I'm not a financial advisor either, so let's go over the snooze. <laughs> uh, one of the most misunderstood concepts in crypto taxes is cost basis or simply what you pay to acquire a crypto asset. It's a very important number because you have to know what it is to know how much you owe in taxes. Now, what is cost basis? According to the Internal Revenue Code, Section 1012, the basis of property shall be the cost of such property, which also includes the cost of any capital improvements made to the property. Translated into crypto terms, this means your cost basis for a token is whatever you paid in U.S. dollars to acquire it, plus any associated fees. The concept of improvements doesn't apply here since crypto is intangible and typically housed in immutable code. A basic example is buying one Ethereum on Coinbase for 3000 and then transferring it to a MetaMask. Your cost basis in that uh, Ether would be $3,000 plus the fair valued in USD of the gas fee to transfer it. Tracking the cost of a few Ethereum is one thing, but with crypto, taxpayers are required to track the value of each token in every transaction. You could easily end up with thousands of transactions to parse and properly label. Even if you enlisted Coinly or Coin Tracker to help you out, there's still oodles of manual scrubbing to do. Now, there is also another important distinction in crypto taxes. What is the character of any income you receive on the blockchain? Character is whimsical, a term for a concept that infinitely is more boring. <laughs> Basically, was the income you earned ordinarily or capital? Ordinary income arises from transactions like mining Bitcoin or staking Atom. By contrast, capital gains are generated from selling, trading, swapping, or spending your tokens. Crypto deacons only care about cost basis because they can generate significant gains that are taxed up to 25%, depending on the holding period. And since taxes can only be paid in fiat for now, you're penalized with double taxation when you convert your crypto to USD to pay for the liability. Now, did, let's see, did you know cost basis is used for cryptocurrency? Because in 2014, the Internal Revenue Service ruled that virtual currencies should be taxed as property in 2014. It only took the IRS nine words to declare crypto as property, but there's nothing simple about the application of the rules in practice. Although the crypto industry has exploded and changed since 2014, the IRS is still applying rules from 1986. Now, do, do, do how to incorporate cost basis into your tax strategy. Well, instead of despairing and moving to Puerto Rico to avoid capital gains, although, although there's caveats there as well, there are a tax strategies you can employ to minimize your long and short-term capital gains. One, compare the different cost basis methods. Token tracking software make it easier to switch between the different cost basis methods so you can compare your total liability under each one. <clears throat> the most popular ones are FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, or HIFO, highest in, first out. <clears throat> These methods, all of which are IRS compliant, refers to what cost basis is used when calculating gains and losses. If you're selling Ethereum in a bull market, signing HIFO or LIFO will minimize your taxes since you cost basis will likely be higher. Choosing FIFO is more conservative and the IRS preferred, of course, more fiat for them, but your taxes will be higher since your cost basis is lower. Now, unfortunately, taxpayers have to be consistent with their cost basis method, so you can't pick whatever is most advantageous for each token. Before filing, it's worth assessing your portfolio to see which method leads to the lowest liability. 
Two, carry out tax minimization strategies by December. Chatting about tax crypto strategies in April is quaint, but any transaction related to your strategy must be carried out by December 31st to be effective for tax year. To take advantage of your cost basis, examine your portfolio in December to see if you are having the following. Assets that are in loss position, i.e. your cost basis per token is higher than the current price. The losses from selling those assets can be used to offset any gains or lead to an overall net capital loss. This net loss is capped at $3,000 per year and any excess can be carried forward indefinitely. Assets held greater than one year. If you're considering selling or trading an asset, waiting until the holding period is greater than one year means any capital gains are subject to the long-term tax rates. Selling crypto assets you've held for less than one year and taxed at ordinary tax rates. Assets with $0 cost basis. Holding these assets will not trigger any taxable events and will ensure your taxes aren't wrecked by a bull market. Don't forget to include your transaction fees. For anyone transacting on Ethereum, pre-merge, including your transaction fees in your cost basis is a must. This is especially relevant in the world of NFTs since minting events can often cost thousands of dollars in gas fees, i.e. my sad attempt to buy a crypto kitty. <laughs> cost basis is nuanced and a headache, especially for crypto hobbyists who just want to sell a damn crypto kitty. Complexities such as character, holding periods, methodologies, and even what software to use are many rabbit holes. It's easy to be confused by this piece of crypto taxes, especially when the IRS has outdated and convoluted guidance. Consult your tax account accountant and hopefully one with crypto expertise before filing. And thankfully, you can always refile an amendment return if needed. So yeah, so that's a little tax information for this last minute tax doers out there. I thought it was pretty educational, but yeah, the cost average for your basics is just the moment you purchased it. So if, you're on, so if you sent your crypto somewhere, make sure you put when you got those cryptos beforehand and then when you sold it or even when you sent it, when you were exchanged for anything, everyone's going to have a calculator. You guys keep track of it. every single one. Okay, I got this amount here. That was a price. And then that's your cost calculated time. So yeah, so if you got some information from this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a beat. And until next time, the Crypto Sherpa is out.